Okay, welcome, welcome in the audience and welcome to the program. The guest is an old dear friend of mine and the world of intellectual interest in things political and broader. Uh, Lenny Brenner, he's an author of many, many books and many works and uh, it's such a pleasure to welcome you, Lenny, once again to Conversations for the umpteenth time to help enlighten the people of New York and the broader world as this is streamed to the world. Okay. Now, one thing I want to say at the outset, Lenny is now in the middle of having, um, he had a little bout, he has a little bout with cancer, and so he looks a little bit different than those who've tuned in before, and maybe we could just sort of uh, deal with that. You're, 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 you're almost through a procedure and so forth, or maybe yeah. you could just touch on that. All then right. let's let get me, down let to me, some let of me, the... Let me point something out yeah. to, to my fan, my adoring you fan. You have a lot of fans. All right, though. okay. Yeah, yeah. They will notice that I am not only bald, but mm. I don't have a beard. Okay. Well, you don't have much of a beard. You have a little bit All of right. a, let little me, wispy let me, beard. Let me, let me explain. Yeah, yeah. That's not from the cancer. Oh, really? No, uh, that's from the cancer medicine. Ah, okay, okay, right, okay. What it is is cancer is wild growth of cells. Yeah, that's, that's what I understand. That's what, a yeah. definition of cancer. Mm. Okay, so the, chem the chemotherapy that uh -huh. they give you yeah. goes after growing cells. Okay. All right, so uh -huh. my beard yeah. is, growing, is a growing beard. Yeah. It completely is gone, yeah. except for the mustache yeah, and crazy. under here. Yeah. Okay, because that grew to, I, I never c cut my mustache, so uh -huh. it grew to full length. Uh -huh. So it no longer grows. Uh -huh. So I have a mustache uh -huh. and a little thing under my, my chin, <laughs> but I'm completely bald. You're not completely, you have a few wispy. Uh, a few hairs, you know. Golden All right. hairs among the gold or silver right, hairs. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I go for one more chemotherapy. Okay, good. Then they do an exam to right. see if it's all right. right. The doctor is cautiously optimistic. Let's hope, okay. but they're always cautious. Well, yeah. okay, they, yeah. they have to be cautious. Right, right, know. right, right. All right, and then when the chemo is, is done, they, since the chemo is killing growing, uh, the growing hair, mm -hmm. once they're done with the chemo, the hair will grow back. Ah, all right. Really? Now you know I, I'm passing this on to folks who may have to encounter this. Hey, yeah. Yeah. cancer. Let me put it this way: When I was a kid, yeah, cancer meant doctor, hospital, cemetery. That's right. I can remember that. It was a death sentence. All yeah. right. Okay. Now there's a lot they can do. Now there's a lot, uh -huh. and I'll tell you something. You know, when we're talking about spending money on war or mm -hmm. on this or that and the other thing, you know. Um, there I am in the VA hospital yeah. w with chemical treatment, et cetera. Uh -huh. What the government of the United States should be spending money on is medical treatment, medical experimentation, et cetera, et cetera. Everything, that's prime, you know. Uh -huh. Health, education, and jobs, that's the key. Now, in the real world, uh -huh. unfortunately, they're second rate. Like, for example, the. Who's second rate? Medicine for oh, the med government. Like, for example, they spend so you much. and I are in the VA. Okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. The VA doesn't give out dental treatment. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Unless you were shot in, in the mouth. During during your service, yeah. you don't get dental treatment. What is that? Is that a, the the power of the dentist association? No, it's that it, dentistry is very expensive. Okay, like I go now to uh, NYU Dental uh, Clinic uh, oh, for, 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 yeah. for plates. Yeah, and hey, they're cheap and they cost money. If yeah, you know right. what I yeah. mean. All right, so the government doesn't want to pay for a million zillion veterans teeth. Well, okay. they pay for things medical, like heart surgery is pretty expensive. I, I understand, but yeah. I'm saying. And medicine is soaking up, what, 18% of our domestic product? All right, what I'm saying is that the government, one of the, one of the demands that the anti-war movement should make, that you know the, 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 the progressive movement should yeah. make, uh. is that the VA should handle dental work. You well, know? okay, that's one issue that that's could be. One issue. I, yeah, that'd All be right. good. That'd be helpful. Okay. Now, now, in, okay, let's get down to the realities. And uh, I've got down as a thing. You are the editor of 51 documents. Doc, editor, document 51 documents, 
Yeah, maybe you can show it. Okay. And he's written so many, but he's also... 51 documents, the iconic Zionist book. collaboration with the Nazis. In 51 documents, he's got documents of the collaboration between the Nazis and the, um, and the Zionists. And he's also written a classic work, Zionism in the Age of Dictators or of the Dictators. Okay, you see, and in fact, the 51 documents, yeah. what it is is I, I quoted the documents in Zionism in the Age of the Dictators. They did. All right. Uh -huh. All right. You know, you quote a page yeah. from here, a line yeah. from here, a line from there. Yeah. Afterwards, I realized, hey, why don't I put the, all the documents together in one big fat book? It'll back up Zionism in the Age of the Dictators. People right, can read are. the yeah. whole thing, you know? Right. And it was to make a point. To make the point. Right. Yeah. Now, what's, what's important about Zionism is that Let's, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. Every newspaper in the United States today, the front page story is Iran will Israel attack on Monday or on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm being a little facetious, no, but no, no, everybody no. gets the point, you know? With Obama saying, hey, wait a minute, we'll squeeze them to death first. Yeah. We don't have to bomb them, yeah. but if push comes to shove, we're going to bomb them. Yeah. You know, all right, right. the I mean, whole that's, thing. That's yeah. the whole serious thing. And APAC has got uh, seeming great power over the uh, foreign all right. policy. All right, now let, me, let, me, let, me, let me read you some stuff okay. on, on, on why APAC is so powerful. Good, now, that's a big issue. Yeah. Okay, now understand. I was born into an Orthodox Jewish family, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, I only really got interested in Zionism like in, in the late 60s. Before that, I was involved in the Civil Rights Movement and so on and so forth. I only started paying attention to it really heavy in the, in the 60s, okay? Right. okay? Now, this is the story, the central story of American Zionism and the Democratic and Republican parties, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In 1973, Margaret Truman wrote a book called Harry S. Truman, her daddy. Yeah. And she's talking about, on, this is a quote from her book. Okay. On October 6, 1970, 1947, Bob Hannigan, the Democratic National Chairman almost made a speech pointing out how many Jews were major contributors to the Democratic Party campaign fund and were expecting the United States to support the Zionist position on Palestine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing more official about Harry Truman than Harry Truman's daughter's book, mm -hmm. if, if you know what I mean, all right? Well, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, since that time, okay, now this is Earl Rabb and Seymour Martin Lipset, two uh -huh, yeah. eminent Zionists, they wrote this again in the 70s, okay? Mm -hmm. While there have been few reliable statistics on the subject, and some reluctance to gather any, mm -hmm. the journalistic and anecdotal evidence is overwhelming that more than a majority of Democratic funds on a national level and as much as a quarter of Republican funds have come from Jewish sources. Wow. Okay. All right. A quarter. Okay. To rep yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, now um, in, in 1993, uh, Tom Friedman said, although they make up a much smaller percentage of the percentage of the electorate than females, black, or Hispanic voters, Jews contributed about 60 percent of Mr. Clinton's non-institutional campaign funds. What's the difference between institution and non-institution? In other words, yeah. an institution yeah. is like a trade union. Yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah. All right. In other words, basically speaking, the Democratic Party gets its funds from three sources, okay, unions, okay. rich elderly Jews, mm -hmm. and Christian, rich Christians, depending on whether the Democratic Party is in power, 
depending on whether the Democratic Party looks like it might win. In other words, the percentage of Christian, rich Christian money is pragmatic. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, yeah. in 2008, they gave a bunch of money to Obama because it looked like Obama was going <coughs> to win. Uh, you see what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, that's all right. All, yeah, but right. the yeah. sure money mm -hmm. up till now has come from from rich Jews. I mean, that's that's the the, the sure money, and and it's up up to the minute. Like in in, in 2011, Ron Campus, who Man. runs the Washington Bureau of the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. Now, that's the equivalent of the Zionist Associated Press. He says Obama captured 78% of the Jewish vote in 2008, and estimates over the year have reckoned reckon that Jewish donors provide between one-third and two-thirds of the party's money. Wow, now that's a big, big figure. That's a lot of figures. One-third to two-thirds. Uh, yeah. And they're all saying the same thing. In other words, now, 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 let me let me make it exact. Well, could I say something? Sure, Maybe? certainly. Yeah, well, 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 yeah, well, uh, the, uh, they're contributing to it. APAC uh, is a very prominent. He, the president went and spoke, and um, the uh, APAC and and the Zionist claim of Mr. Netanyahu that they have sovereignty and all that. And if the 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 largest Voting block for the Democratic Party has uh, the Jewish have been one of the largest blocks of the Democratic Party, always voting democratically and so forth. That would be, in a certain sense, um, for the people, in a certain sense, in terms of politics. So why is it that that right wing stance that is so characteristic of uh, Israel's status has been? I mean, the Jewish community, isn't there a mismatch between All the right. Jewish community contributing from a progressive, intellectually interesting in social and political affairs, so sort of thing, characteristic of the Jewish community, and support of Israel? All right, hear me out, because this well, is... Well, how does that all I, work? I understand. Yeah. Hear yeah. me out. I mean, yeah. you know, give, give me, give me yeah. a couple of minutes to explain. Yeah. The average Jew... Mm -hmm. Now, now Jews are two, two and a half percent of the population in the United States. All right. Okay. The average Jew is not a Zionist, does not contribute a penny to the Zionist movement, okay? And most of the young ones have dropped away from the Jewish religion. Okay? okay, about half of young Jews now marry Gentiles. Yeah. Now okay. they're not half. Oh, uh, yeah. about half. Yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's an unfortunate trend for those who want to keep that. Aha! Uh -huh. You see, yeah. here's the point. Yeah. What you have is a peculiar contrast. At, you know, it, I mean, it's a sociological event. I mm. mean, it's complex. Yeah. Right. Okay? Yeah. Right. Right. The money that one-third to two-thirds that goes to the Democratic Party and 25% of the Republican Party's money that comes from rich Jews comes from rich elderly Jews. Okay. 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 Most of the young Jews, now yeah. the way it works, the official religion of Israel is Orthodox Judaism. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But in the United States, mm -hmm. only maybe 10 to 15 percent of the Jews <coughs> are Orthodox. Okay. Hasids. Yeah. Yeah. Hasids. Yeah, yeah. And what they and call Lubu, modern. Which, yeah, yeah. You know, the guys who wear the skull cap. Right. They wear. They dress like you and I, but they always wear a yarmulke. You know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And then there are the guys with the hair. You know, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The biggest group is called the Reform Jews. Okay. Okay. Now, the difference between them is the difference between day and night. In Orthodox religion, men and women are segregated. Mm -hmm. There's a, always a wall between them in the synagogue, okay? <coughs> in the Reform Jews and what they call the Conservative Jews, yeah. which is the second biggest group, you now have women rabbis. Wow. And okay. gay and, and, and with the reform 
uh, Jews, you have gay rabbis. What is the attitude of the reform and the conservative toward uh, uh, Israel? Ah, here's what they find. Mm -hmm. Officially, they're pro-Israel. Officially. Officially. But what they find is that young reformed Jews are supposed to go for a year to Israel to, you know, to study mm -hmm. Judaism, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. When they come back, they tend to be pro-Palestinian. No kidding. Because, really? Yeah. That's this is, hey, that's I, are you making this up? Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm reading this in, in Jewish community newspapers. Because they encounter apartheid. Well, what they encounter is not only apartheid, yeah. but apartheid against them. Against them. They are not recognized as rabbis uh -huh. in Israel. You've got to be an orthodox rabbi. Wow. Okay. So the result is they come to Israel, they're not recognized as rabbis, and they see the segregation of, of uh, Jews and Arabs, mm -hmm. like, you know, when they talk about Israeli settlements on the West Bank, now 20 percent of... A thousand the, homes in Jerusalem all right, we're talking okay. about now. Those are for Jews only. Yeah, sure. In other yeah, words, yeah. and is, now, now, for example, you, an and, and Arab refugee from Israel, let's say, who lives in Jordan, they can't just walk into Israel and marry an Israeli Arab. Hmm. Oh, you see, because that would be sneaking back into the country. Okay? You, you, get, you get my point? I'm, I'm trying to, yeah. All I'm right, trying, you see, yeah. the way, here, here's the way the story goes. The central document of modern Zionism is called the Iron Wall. It was an article by Vladimir Jabotinsky. Jabotinsky was a revisionist. Okay. Right? He founded the revisionist movement. Yeah, now, right. Yeah. To put that into context, mm. Netanyahu's father, uh -huh. who is still alive and is about to celebrate his 102nd birthday. Good grief. All right. Good genes there. Huh? All right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Jabotinsky set up, uh, wrote an article in 1923 all about Zionist colonization. Now, I'm reading from, understand, Netanyahu's father was Jabotinsky's secretary. Wow. Okay, all right? I didn't so, know that. So yeah, this right. is like yeah. holy writ. Yeah, right. As far right. as the revisionist movement is concerned. Now, this is Jabotinsky. Mm. Zionist colonization must either stop or else proceed regardless of the native population, which means that it can proceed and develop only under the protection of a power that is independent of the native population behind an iron wall which mm. the native population cannot breach, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. Right. So what you got, and now so we he, realize they're not going to be greeted with uh, well, flowers let thrown me put in it their this path. Way. Yeah. Let, me, let me put it this way. Mm. Let me tell you, your, 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 list, your, yeah. your fans, yeah. my fans, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This article, The Iron Wall by Jabotinsky, if you want to know what Zionism about, is about, it's must reading. If you email me at Brenner L. 21 at AOL.com, send me your email address, I'll email back the complete text of this document. Thank you. All That's right? a great offer. All right. Yeah. It's a you great offer. You wanted to spread the word. Because yeah. let me tell you, he uses, the, he's, this article is all about Zionist colonization. Mm -hmm. He uses the term colonization 14 time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And his attitude is, hey, it's just like any other country. Colonization, The yeah. natives, the Sioux Indians, yeah, and right. the Aztecs, yeah. they fought the mighty whitey, mm. and the Palestinians are going to fight us, and there ain't no way we, we become a majority mm. by force. Uh-huh, yeah, well, okay? that's con it's called conquest it's and, co colonization, and colonization, and it's the way of the world. All right, yeah. now, the, the, now, see, but here's the, here's the story. After the Holocaust, yeah. anti-Semitism 
The Jewish Holocaust. The Jewish Holocaust. Do you think it's important to distinguish? Why is it that they've ever appropriate to the Jewish suffering, the term Holocaust, when the uh, decrease of the Aboriginal population in, in the Americas was worse? I, you Why know, is that able I, to have been done in a public relations coup? Well, I, I mean, let me let me put it this way. Um, the the the. the the Jewish Holocaust got obviously special attention because but they don't give it. They don't say Jewish Holocaust. They say the Holocaust. Okay, all right. The Holocaust no, 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 is I, associated I, I, let, with them let, only, let me, and there's a lot of uh, space let, to let be me made explain. in terms of that. Every educated American knows that America, mighty whitey, came in and conquered America. I don't think they know it as well as they should. Well, but they, they, the educated do. Well, okay. All right. Now, and understand, we now have 30% of, of American adults now have a, a bachelor's degree. Mm. Yeah, you're right. All right. It is growing. Yes, yeah. it yeah. is growing, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, 20% of blacks now have a bachelor's degree. Okay, yeah. Uh, adult blacks, okay? Now, well, what I'm saying is that the word Holocaust caught on, and uh, you know, after the Jewish Holocaust, and it stayed on, and there's a lot of publicity about it, et cetera, et cetera. How many Jews were killed, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. No, but they've got the term Holocaust associated with Jews. Yeah, but when the Holocaust, I mean, a Holocaust has been delivered down on many people, well, besides uh, me, only me, the let Jews. Me, let, me, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. um, about a million, a million and a half Armenians Thank were murdered you. by the Turks, okay? That was, uh, but, that's not called the Holocaust, okay, that's called the right. Armenian but Holocaust. But wait a minute, the United States, Congress talks about the Jewish Holocaust all the time, it stays away from the Armenian Holocaust because... I bet you'll find official records where it's just called the Holocaust. Well, and in the what press, I'm, it's what called I'm the Holocaust. Trying, what I'm, and it's always the Harold, Jews what I'm trying, yeah. what I'm trying to tell you mm -hmm. is that the American government doesn't like to talk, and the Congress and the politicians don't like to talk about the Armenian Holocaust because Turkey is a NATO ally of the United States and the Turks deny that there was a Holocaust. Well, okay. All right, a couple yeah. of thousand Armenians yeah. got killed, hey, you know, I mean, but no million and a half, okay? Mm -hmm. All of this is, 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 is politics. Mm -hmm. like okay, the, okay, it's politics and PR. All right, all right. All right. And you can make a lot of space for right. PR, yeah. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. What we now have in the United States today, and this, this is like brand new, September 17, 2011, you had Occupy Wall Street march, tried to march into uh, Wall Street. They got stopped, and they took over the Cody Square. Yeah. All right. And they started talking about the 1% and the 99%. Lenny, you and I both have a few years on us, and I'm telling you, I'm happy I lived long enough for there to be maybe the beginning of a real systematic questioning of the whole ball of All wax. Right. Let, I am so encouraged by that and would want to do everything to encourage that finally happening and not being co-opted and so forth. All right, I just now, make that side. Let, let me, this is very, it's I, very I agree with you completely. Glad I lived long enough let to me, see let me it put trying it this way. to come to birth. I, yeah. I, I had a funny incident happen that, with regards to Occupied Wall Street. Yeah. I was writing an article mm. uh, and, I, and I started it by saying, is there even 1% of the population in the United States that doesn't have an opinion on Occupied Wall Street? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next morning, You've got I, picked humor, up, yeah. I picked up the New York and Times. And sure there it was, right? And there it was. Same word. Wait, wait, wait a minute. It said 1% and 99% have now become part of the and idiom yeah, of right. the English language. Right, right. Okay. Good, yeah. All right. From out of nowhere. Yeah. Now, let me put it this way. No matter what else happens, they have had a tremendous, uh, Occupied Wall Street, which I'm part of now. No, absolutely. So, okay, have had a tremendous success. But everybody, every serious observer mm -hmm. says the same thing. Okay, you hit the target 
you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the gap between the rich and the poor and the middle class, etc. But the question is, how do you bell the cat? What are you going to do about it? Now, 99% <coughs> the movement, OWS, is all over the United States and world and the world. All right, that's encouraging. But now, in, in in terms of the United States, what I'm saying is, it's on every college campus, it's everywhere. Wonderful. Okay. May it grow and prosper. All right, mm -hmm. but it runs from anarchists to commies, Democrats. Oh, oh, the Democrats. Oh no. Okay. See, I mean, yeah, in other yeah, words, yeah. all kinds of Democratic politicians and and and, and li liberal Democrats have shown up at OWS rallies and yeah. stuff like that. All right. Mm. So the question now becomes, which way does OWS go? Now, what I'm proposing is to to OWS is two things. Number one that OWS organize a debate about the election, running from whether we should vote at all, because there are anarchists who say, listen, the elections are completely corrupt and you know, don't waste your time. Yeah. Should they vote for the Green Party? Mm -hmm. Should they vote for, for, for Obama as the lesser of two evils. Whatever. You wrote that book. On all right. That, yeah. yeah. All right. Now, you see. Now here's. Now let me make my point. Okay, okay. Please. If they organize a debate and say, "Okay, anarchists, you get a thousand words on the internet. Yeah. You get a thousand words, yeah. Mr. Obama. You or your party." A thousand words. Oh, everybody gets the same. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, if they yeah, organize yeah. a systematic thing, mm -hmm. free gratis and for nothing, that puts the focus on the fact that American today's American politics is a business. That's right. It is. Yeah. That's right? what it is. It's like an ad campaign. Well, you know, selling I mean, cornflakes. Let, yeah. let me let yeah. me put it this way. Yeah. Now, now that Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Supreme Court has allowed the United super PACs. Citizens United. Yes. All right. So what you've got now is everybody is hustling money. Yeah, right. You know, for money. Hey, send us a million dollars. Yeah, right. Okay. Like this guy Adelson, the Zionist, Republican Zionist, uh, Bernie Adelson. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He spent, he has already given $10. Million dollars oh, to, to, uh, to Gingrich. Oh, yeah, okay. right, right. All right. Iowa, I think. All right. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. And in other words, he gave him five million. Yeah. And then his wife gave five million. Yeah, right? yeah. They can go on forever. Well, they, they got go some on. sugar. All day. right. Now, Daddy Warbucks. Remember okay. Daddy Warbucks? Now, yeah. I want to make. I want to emphasize again. Mm. Not all the Jews give money to the Democratic or Republican Party or to the Zionists. Or to the APAC. Or to A well, see, APAC doesn't take money. It's, it's, we don't take money. What do you mean they don't take they money? Don't, they're, they're very powerful. They're very powerful. How can they be powerful they without don't big make, money? They don't give the money. They have the lectures, et cetera, but gracious, we don't touch the money. It's private individuals that give the money. It's a technical thing. It's just to make them look good. See, it's a non, it's a non-profit, and you know there are all kinds. Of, I didn't know that. I, I'm I saying. Didn't. I know you would know. I know yeah, you would I, know I, that. I, I'm telling but you. they're extremely influential. Oh, I mean, let me put it this way. That's where they go. And let talk. me put it this way. How do they get to be so influential? Because they are the official. Israeli lobby in the United States. They okay. are, and they are lobbying to bomb Iran and start that Absolutely. whole thing going. All yeah. right, and and let and me put it, let me put it this way: hundreds of congressmen went to the to the APEC conference. Hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah, right. Yeah, and Obama and, talked. All right. And yeah, the president. All right. Yeah. I, I'm saying, you know, yeah. in other words. It, it's like the second Congress of the United States. You think APEC does not re represent uh, larger the the Jewish community of this well, country writ large? Do you now, think let that? Me, let me or are they you. one wing of it, or what? I, is I'm it? telling you. Let Come me, to it. Yeah. yeah let me let yeah. me put it this way. Mm. There's a thing now called birthright Israel. What the hell is that? Ah, okay. What they found is that most Jews never went to Israel. Most American Jews. 
make never Aliyah, went, you mean? Yeah. Not, not uh, never mind Aliyah. Oh, never even visited. Even, even visited. Uh -huh. Okay. God, it's a great time. More climate, Jews yeah. visit Britain mm -hmm. to go to see Shakespeare's home uh -huh. than go to Israel. Why? Because when they they graduate. They get bar mitzvah at 13. This yeah. is the reformed Jews yeah, and, and, and the conservative yeah. Jews. Yeah. It's like graduating from junior high school. I'm done. It's over. Now I don't have to go anymore. Mm. They don't go to the synagogues. They fall out. Yeah. They're not interested is it in Judaism. Mm -hmm. You see, they no longer live in Jewish neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay, most. They married a shiksa. I'm saying, see, most, mm. most. If you live in a, let me let me put it this way. Mm. I was born into a Jewish neighborhood in Williamsburg. Yeah. Okay, but when I was five years old, mm. my mother remarried, and we moved into a neighborhood in the Bronx. My landlord was Italian. My next door neighbor was Italian. <laughs> the kid down the block was Irish. Mm -hmm. You get yeah, my point. Yeah, yeah, all right? yeah, yeah. Now moved into America. Yeah. Moved into America. Yeah. Okay. So that has now, especially since the Black Civil Rights Movement all made right. any kind of uh, religious discrimination or racial discrimination in housing yeah. illegal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most Jews now live among Gentiles. Really? Yes. Most. They okay. don't have Jewish sections. All right. You have, you have Orthodox them, Jewish sections or, yeah. in Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But even in Brooklyn. The Bubich and. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, I'm saying. Yeah, you know, yeah, the right. The Bubich yeah. yeah. and the. the and uh, the Notura Carta people. Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. right. They live in Jewish neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're Jewish. All right, but they are orthodox. Most of the Jews in Brooklyn, the latest number that I've seen is that 61% of Brooklyn Jews don't practice Judaism. Don't practice Judaism. They're going secular. They're going secular. The world's going secular. Well, you I see, think. what's happened, let me put it this way. <coughs> what's happened is Jews are the most educated group in the United States. Yeah, and their intellectual right. contributions are staggering. Right. And so, I think there's an anti-Semitism as a, a lot of roots of this anti-intellectualism. I think, because the intellectual no. contribute to it's me. It's now working the other way around. Really? Really? You see, you see what's simply happened is that a Gentile tiger mother Mm. That's the term, you know. Yeah, now. from okay. Korea, yeah. Okay. Mm. A tiger mother, yeah. <laughs> what she wants her kid is to go to the college with the most Jewish professors and the most Asian students. Interesting. All right? right. Yeah, okay. I mean, America in my in our lifetime mm -hmm. has changed so much mm. that today I said 30% of adult Americans have a bachelor's degree. Yeah. 50% of Asian students. Asians, that include Chinese? Uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, yeah. Indians, etc. That's a, that's a okay. group that's being recognized now. There's a, right. lot, of in di other a words, lot of diversity there. In other yeah. words, what simply has happened yeah. is like a reverse of reality. The, the, the blacks are still looked upon as, you know, they're poor, etc. But even they're 20%, and we have a black president. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the the one group that has sort of dropped in the estimation of the public is what you might call poor white trash. Okay, we got a lot of that. E evangelical. Mm. Yeah. You, say, you <laughs> yes. know what I'm saying? Right, right. They're right. looked upon as oh, they're the dummies. Now, for example, when yeah, when you, you got stock car racing, what do they call? All that? right, you see what I'm saying is now. When a Jew, a young Jew, marries a Gentile, the the Gentile is most likely he or she is most likely to marry them. is an ex-Catholic. Ex-Catholic because the 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 church is just falling apart, right, it's right, losing right, its white right, right. population. <coughs> all right, is it really? It's yeah, getting okay, a yeah. lot of. Um, Mexican and you know Latino. Well, people are getting educated, so they're becoming secular. Well, which you, is it? I don't see how they could go any other way in terms of well, the uh, me, fairy tale that is it, mostly religion. All right, let me put it this way: the upper class white Episcopalian, yeah. the Jews, 
and the better, edu better educated Catholics mm. are drifting off into secularism. Uh, drifting, I think it's more not a drift. Well, it's more let, of let, a, me, let me put it this way. A strong wind. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, when I say they're drifting off, what I'm saying is, is that, like, I'm an, an I'm an atheist. I'm an anti-Zionist. Okay, mm. the average Jew drifts away from religion. But if you ask them, well, what do you believe in? Well, I, I don't really, I'm a secular, separation of church and state. They got a thing in the news today, Lenny, about a, a, a billboard that went up where they had it somewhere that's being tested uh, that uh, to all, is it all Christians or Jews, I'm not sure, uh, become an atheist. Right. Uh, just step up and become an atheist and admit it and so forth. And they're going to, because they say this nation under God and the religion is such a hold on people. And the, the move towards secular intellectual understanding of things, uh, agnostic if not atheist, is, is moving in, in very rapid dimensions. Well, let me put it this way. Seems to me. No, it, people are getting smart. Uh, let me put it this way. I agree with you. Uh, the London Economist mm -hmm. did a survey of America, and what they said is that, yes, atheism is growing, mm -hmm. but more important is simply people are abandoning their traditional family religion and looking around. Okay, All okay, right? that might be what part okay. of Occupy, yeah, okay. that kind of thing. That's okay, a, in other yeah. words, mm -hmm. um, the Dalai Lama yeah. is popular, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it doesn't have all that Adam and Eve and 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 uh, fairy tale. All right, but yeah. it has its own fairy tale. Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay? right, right, reincarnation. Right, right, all right. right, right. But what I'm saying is the Vedics have all that un untouchable cast. Can you imagine? They just say, "Well, there's this few group of people that are just, you know, they just say it right all out." Right. Now, and see, they, you know, and see, now here, see, it's here's absurd. an interesting thing that's happened in the United States. We have two southern governors. Yeah. From whose families are from India, okay, one really? in Louisiana yeah. and one in South Carolina. Didn't know. Yeah. But they converted to Christianity uh -huh. because Hinduism is just too far <laughs> out. Yes. For Americans. Right. Right. You know, right. 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 I mean, right. Buddhism. At the same time, if you try to run as an atheist for president, you haven't got a chance okay. in hell. So there's just all, all right. kinds now, of mixed feelings now let me, going on. Let me on. put it this way. Now, no wonder it's roiling the soul of the nation. This is my opinion. Mm. You know, if you ask me, what is the religion of Obama? His mother was completely secular, and his father was a Muslim who became an atheist. <laughs> Okay. Now, are you got, now all of a sudden he goes to Chicago and starts working. But he can't push that. Now wait a minute, he no. can't push that. No. And all of a sudden he becomes a Christian. Yeah. All right. Reverend Wright. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask me, well, I you got to do that for it. political reasons. All right, that's you got it. The, yeah, you got right, it. Right. All right? right. 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 And then when they started chasing after Reverend Wright, mm. he dropped Reverend Wright, and now he goes once in a while. Well, he's a pragmatist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, basically speaking, his politic, his religion, and his politics is. I'm a Democratic Party lawyer. Mm. That's my religion. That's yeah. my politics. Yeah. That's my private life. Yeah. That's my everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you yeah, yeah. my point. Yeah. Okay. Listen, one of the problems we got to get going because there's some things that ought to come up because you wanted to mention at the beginning. I'll remind you is the situation about Saudi Arabia. All right. Now here's uh, the way the game goes. Talk about politics. Here's the way the game goes. I'm glad we're is both occupy Wall Street. And, okay. okay all right. Yeah. Here's the way the game goes. In 2011, yeah. Obama made the biggest military weapons deal in American history, 60 to 90 billion dollars with Saudi Arabia. Wow, 60, that's what Ev Dirksen even would have called All real right. money. All that's right. a huge it's thing, maybe as much as 80 billion dollars. in American history. Right, okay. and that's for weapons or for what? Weapons. Uh, weapons, okay. for the country of Saudi Arabia. The country of Saudi Most Arabia. Most reactionary country Saudi in the world. Saudi Arabia has 
is the only country in the world that doesn't allow women to drive, <laughs> drive a, car. a car. All right? Okay? <laughs> it has a, it's an absolute monarchy. Uh, yeah. No, right. no rights for, for any religion. You cannot <laughs> pray. A, a yeah. Christian cannot publicly right. pray. <clears throat> Even a Shia. Okay. Yeah. 10% of yeah. the population in Saudi Arabia are Shia Muslims. Yeah, right. uh -huh. They, the, they run, they're along the Persian Gulf, yeah. okay? They cannot elect a mayor in their towns. The mayors are all Sunni uh -huh. Muslims, yeah. okay? And you got that situation in Bahrain. All right, and, yeah. and Bahrain is like yeah. just across off. And that's where our Navy is based. All right, yeah. okay, Their now understand, Navy. Bahrain yeah. is just a bridge, there's a bridge yeah, right, between right, right. Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Right, right, okay, right. And the Saudi Arabian army went in there to protect the uh, Saudi king, again, against the yeah. Shia majority yeah. there. All right? Oh, and the Saudis also have a tap they can turn on right, unlimited now here's the, oil here's the story. available to the, the world. The way it works is this. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia has the second biggest supply of oil in the world. Venezuela has more oil. Yeah, you tell me that. But that it's is. hard to get at. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Saudi Arabia you just by put now. A hole in the ground. All you do is <laughs> turn, you turn the, the faucet. Yeah. It's like, you know, you want hot water, you want cold water. Yeah, you know? right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, when the price of oil gets too high, uh -huh. The White House calls Saudi Arabia. Turn on the tap. And Saudi Arabia turns out more oil and the price drops. Right. Okay? And the political people in power can stay in power. Okay. So the way the arrangement works is as long as Saudi Arabia is prepared to lower the price, the United States backs the Saudi regime. Right. Now, they understand that. Now, don't misunderstand me. Obama is personally not a male chauvinist. Mm -hmm. He has daughters, yeah, a daughter, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's all got that, that. You know, he loves her, all that kind of yeah, stuff, yeah. etc. And he can make a declarative sentence too. Okay, that's nice. He is an imperialist. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. The system. That's the name of the game. Okay, right. right. Okay, yeah, so yeah. So mm -hmm. the way America runs is. Saudi Arabia is the center of the oil industry because, mm -hmm. as I say, it can set the price, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Like it set the price when you had the New Orleans uh, uh, flood. Yeah, right. All right, right. And they you just, couldn't get oil. Yeah. They lowered the price, mm -hmm. you know, more mm -hmm. oil. They More oil turned out, you know? And they could do that if there was an attack on Iran and exactly. Iran is, exactly. uh, yeah. Okay. And they're, okay, now, yeah. And they're Iran, worried about Iran being Iran, Shia. Iran, yeah. Mm. is very anti-Israel because mm. Israel is very pro-Shah of Iran. Mm. Now, America, understand, Iran is very anti-American because America backed the Shah of Iran. Against Mossadegh. Against Mossadegh, yeah. against everybody. Yeah, right, all right? Right, right, right. And what finally happened was the right-wing Shia mm -hmm. said, what are we doing with this guy? This guy is an American... Puppet, puppet, yeah. And, I mean, you know, we're getting nothing out of it. I mean, mm -hmm. he's enjoying himself, but we're getting nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. So the Shia broke with him, mm -hmm. all right? So, and the, again, the Democratic Party, Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. backed the Shah of Iran up to the day he was overthrown, mm -hmm. and then they brought him here for cancer. Treatment. Right, and, G and uh, David Rockefeller. All right. Yeah. So now you get and the trilateral. As yeah. far uh -huh. as understand the the Shia in Iran are right wingers. Okay, they're male chauvinists. They're almost almost as bad. Women can drive cars in in in. in yeah, Iran, and you have some breakout swim, class. Yeah, they can't swim with men. Is that right? In Iran, right. that's huh? right. Okay. Okay. But yeah. what I'm getting at is that in a swimming pool or in an ocean. In an ocean, they can't swim with men. Okay, because that would lead to sex. Well, it might, but anyway, you right, go ahead. Right, yeah, you get yeah, my point. yeah, that's right. a long-term okay. thing. But yeah. what I'm getting at is that. 10% of Saudi Arabia along the Persian Gulf is Shia. Mm. So Iran supports the Shia in that 10% along the Persian Gulf and in Bahrain, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So America, which supports Saudi Arabia, is anti-Iran, mm -hmm. okay? And Iran 
also supports the Sunni Hamas and the Shia Hezbollah mm -hmm. in Lebanon, Lebanon and Gaza. against Israel. Uh -huh, yeah, right? right. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not a fan of the uh, uh, Shia regime at all. Mm -hmm. This book, believe it or not. Let me show it. I'll hold it up. Okay. This so, is pretty well worn. This book, this book has been read. All right, now, now, okay, all right. <laughs> and now, it's now let me explain what that is. Yeah. I wrote a book called The Iron Wall, yeah, I remember. Zionist Revisionism from Jabotinsky to Shamir. I remember, all I remember, right? yeah. The Iranian, a leading newspaper in Iran, Itilaat, hmm. ran it as a series in their newspaper. They pirated the book. Uh -huh. And then they published Well, wait a minute. You it. can't read this. It's in Arabic. I, it's in Iranian. Oh, it's in Iranian. What? You right, didn't now, read this minute, book. What are you telling me I'm you read that you, book? No, no, no. They it's all right. It's all right, Josh. They, it's okay, Josh. Thank you. Thank they you. They pirated my book. They pirated your book. Pirated okay, my book. Okay, yeah. And then where it's I... It's in Iranian. How can in you? In Iranian. Yeah, yeah. And then when, they, when I said Hitler killed six million Jews... Uh, they put in a footnote saying it was only a million Jews. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and now, uh -huh. wait a minute. Now, mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they did that in 1988. No, that's your book. That's isn't? my that's book. <laughs> All right. My pirated book. Oh, okay? right. Okay. But yeah. now listen to this. In Scam 2006, yeah. they had a Holocaust denial conference in Tehran. They did, I remember that. A okay. lot of the tour card with, people went to with that. With David Duke. Yeah, David from Duke. From the yeah. KKK. Yeah, right. And the stupid idiots from the Naturi Carter, okay? Yeah. Okay, and, yeah. And the neo-Nazi party in Germany, mm -hmm. all about how it was only a million Jews and all this is lies and all that stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. go on, yeah. You uh -huh. see, because as I say, they're anti-Zionists from a right-wing uh, religious perspective. Well, Zionism and the Jews are like a, what's it called, running dog of the United States imperialism, right. are they words, not? They're a ba base there of Western imperialistic control of the WOG. Isn't right. that more or less well, the let situation? Me put it this way. Isn't that the, the Iran situation? I'm answering Thank you. you. Okay. The, in, in Iranian, they call uh, America Great Satan, Satan Bozarog. Yeah. Okay. Israel is little Satan. Right. Okay. okay. A and, running dog. All right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you know. Except APEC thinks they should be able to go their own oh, way, okay, and Zabotinsky okay. now, says it. Now, Not, now, I mean, Netanyahu says okay, it. Okay. Now. They've got their sovereign right to bomb the Bajis. They could fly. They could fly through. Okay. Now, uh, now wait a minute. Now, now. Just to put this in perspective, I mean, this is a horrible story any which way you play it. Right. Okay. Because it could set off a holocaust that could destroy the whole what, let me, species. Okay, let me... Let me Most dangerous place in the world. Let me explain it. The United States ar armed and trained the Shah's secret police when they Sabak. were a torture regime, the Savak. Yeah. The United States gives three billion dollars a year to Israel. I thought it was a little more than oh, that. three billion point one. Yeah, you know, the right, biggest right. of anybody. All right, bigger than anybody. Steady, okay. steady as a rock. Yeah. The United States made the biggest military arms deal in American history with Saudi Arabia. But they've had an ongoing thing with Israel because Israel has whatever they want coming off the dock while they try to sanction things in Gaza, but they can have Apache helicopters, the latest weapons and everything. Well, unlimited, put, unlimited this power. Way. Yeah. The United States knew that Israel was helping apartheid uh, uh, South Africa build atom bombs. You mean okay. in South Africa? In South Africa. In other <coughs> words, the way the deal worked mm. was that Israeli atomic scientists yeah. were helping the South African atomic scientists build atomic bombs in return for which apartheid South Africa was shipping uranium mm -hmm. to Israel. That's fuel. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Now you get my point. Yeah. Is that this was going on 
when, in broad when are you daylight. When are you talking? Yeah, you, w w w you did, since the 50s, 60s? This was going on 60, 70s, from the, the 70s, the okay. 80s, yeah. all the way until what happened was the Cuban army helped the Angola. South Africans in Angola right. beat the South African army right. and the white South African government realized we can't win with the Cuban army here. We're yeah. going to lose. Uh -huh. So they sat down and they made a deal. Yeah. And they stopped. And when the uh, uh, Mandela, uh, you know, when the blacks took over, uh -huh. they stopped making atom bombs. They canceled all of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And now, so did Libya, and look what happened to right. them. But what I'm saying is yeah. that they stopped making it. And but the apartheid goes on. Israel, in reality, Israel mm -hmm. was apartheid's ally up to the minute when apartheid stopped. Up to the minute, uh -huh, okay? Uh -huh. The United States government knew it and never said a word about it. And that includes the black Democrats in it. 99 out of 100 of them never said a word about Israel. The only one I know is, uh, what's his name, uh, the guy in Detroit. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, you've got me there. I don't know. Um, I forget his name. Okay. Uh, but that was because Michigan had the highest percentage of Arabs. Yeah, in Dearborn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So he, he was popular there. The, the, let me put it this way. Right now, Obama is talking about Iran maybe making an atom bomb. Now, by the way, I think that they would like to make an atom bomb. Well, right? they might protect themselves against, uh, look what happened to Libya. All right, but what I'm saying is that, you know, I'm not arguing, as I say, this is a, uh, a no. right-wing, Holocaust-denying, mm regime, they're capable of anything, they don't allow women to swim. I'm not their fan, okay? Yeah. But at the same time, the, everybody knows that Israel has atom bombs. The scholars, one scholar says 100, another one says 400, yeah. another one says 300. Yeah. You never hear a word from Obama about Israeli atom bombs, even He's against proliferation of atom bombs, but he never said a word about the fact well, it's that a, Israel yeah. armed South Af helped so apartheid South Africa. Up until, it, up until, it, up the, until the time ended. they have been. Well, it didn't end anyway. It, it continues, but in any way, they got apartheid developing in their own land. And it's always been that the people who have the weapons, that's what the political class has been interested in, the name of realpolitik, is to get a weapons advantage over the other so you can conquer, steal, and set up your system, and it's still plays. The realpolitik notion of everything comes out of the end of a well, gun still factors in terms I'm of the 74. way. I'm 74. How old are you? I'm getting. I'm going to have. I'm going to be 78 next week. Okay. When we were kids during World War II, you will remember that they stopped producing cars to turn out tanks. Oh yeah, Willow Run. Yeah, right. yeah, Detroit, okay. where okay. I'm from. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, weapons have become a major industry. That's our export, yeah. All right. Yeah, right, okay. right, right. All right, so that militarism has become an integral part of the economy. Of the economy. Right. All right? When, when let me give you an example. When um, they were going to build them uh, the mosque close mm -hmm. to the World Trade Center, yeah. all the Republican congressmen in Idaho started screaming and yelling, hey, it's, it's, you know, it's right next to the mosque, you know, it's right next to the, to the World Trade Center, these Muslim killers. You do that very well. You do that very well. You could be on the stage okay. acting. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as they made the weapons deal with Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian military has to be trained mm. with those weapons. You know, you just yeah, don't yeah. hand over a, a fancy new uh, jet plane. You know, you, you don't jump in yeah, and fly. Right, right, right. They're going to be trained in Idaho. 
all of a sudden, these guys who were yelling and screaming about the mosque yeah. being cl too close to the World Trade Center yeah. were saying, this is wonderful, the Saudi Arabian Air Force is coming to Idaho. <laughs> okay. Well, that's where they're going to be operating the drones now, from. Now, but I want to point something out. from the I desert wanna, Nevada. I want to focus on the Saudi Arabian. Yeah, we only got a couple minutes left, okay. so let's I, move. Yeah. I'm for freedom of religion for Muslims in the United States. Mm. But the government of the United States, Barack Obama, the president of the United States, is a criminal for arming the world's most reactionary regime, the Saudi Arabian government. And if you vote for Obama, knowing that he is arming the only government in the world that doesn't allow women to drive a car, you are an accessory to his crime. Well, what, yeah, but, but what it might be, because they are going to be able to, as I understand from the middle of the conversation we had, that part of that agreement is uh, Israel, and the most dangerous thing is Israel might say, we are a land unto ourselves, we don't have to listen to you, and they, part of that agreement is that they could have air rights over Saudi Arabia right, to bomb uh, Iran and bomb the bejesus out of that uh, scapegoated uh, part of the Islam, let me put it this way. which let me is serving the simple. areas of Israel, Obama and that they could is, do that. And that Obama could is, is the ally of Zionist settler colonialism and Saudi Arabia at the same time. Yeah, right. If he was for only one of them, he would be a criminal. Mm. But he is for both of them. He is a criminal. The, the American system is criminal. It has no, reached is it? that is it? point. Yeah, it has, has reached, it's reached that a, point. a certain point. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. The best it's argument... It's showing up uh, outdated uh, power structures and institutions that have to be fundamentally challenged. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. The best argument against the possibility of democracy in the Middle East is the failure of democracy in the United States of America at this point. Mm, what mm -hmm. I tell people is, in this election, if you want to, all the OWS people, mm. if you want to get going and s start trying to get some democracy in mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. vote for the Green Party. It's on the ballot in mo at least 16 states. It should be on the ballot in about 40 states you know, by the time of the presidential election. And they got uh, Howie Hawkins, or who's going to? Well, going, or what? I mean, I, they, they, yeah. they have to pick their candidate, yeah, okay. at a, at a, at a, you know. So vote. you would say vote green rather than, yeah, the lesser of two evils. Uh, right? Well, I mean. Because the evils it, are so evil. Yeah. The, uh. evil. the lesser evil is so evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I say, if, if it were just the United States Army, Israel, that would be evil. If it were just the United States arming Saudi Arabia, that would be evil. Mm. But they're actually doing both at the same time. You say go green. We've run out of All time, right. my brother. All right. Thank you for bringing us up to date. Bring us up to date in a month, months, and I hope this whole thing with you. I'm looking forward to you with a big beard like Terrain Bay or somebody, uh, you right. know, like a big beard that's grown back after your treatment. Like a Shia Muslim. You, or let, even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your pleasure. Lenny Bretter. Uh, all right, folks. Revolutionary extraordinary. Thanks a lot for all the work. Great. Great talking to you and all this.